Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. It is good to be with you all today. Good to be in God's house. And uh, wonderful to hear that organ this morning. Thank you, Sonny and worship band, uh, for getting us prepared and our hearts in a good spot where we can worship the living God together. And welcome to those who've joined us online, uh, Facebook and YouTube. We're glad that you're here as well. Um, so I do want to point out that um, uh, as we get started, um, our county, Marion County, is now yellow. Uh, it's a recent uh, uh, increase in the CDC level of infection rate for our county. And we are yellow. We are one of only 10 counties in West Virginia that have turned yellow. We're a medium risk of infection. And so what that changes in their protocol is that uh, masks are optional, but they're recommended. So I just wanted you all to know that, that the uh, masks and will continue to be optional, but recommended during this time. And we are hoping that this decreases as we go forward. But welcome today as we're going to worship God. We're going to celebrate the word of God uh, let, and sing some songs and pray some prayers and let God fill our hearts with his love so that we can love the world. So let's, let's worship together.
seated for a moment, and I want us to pause for a moment of prayer. So let's pray together. God, we give you thanks and praise today for victory, for the victory that we have in you over the sins in our life, Lord, the victory over the schemes that, of evil that seem to surround us every single day, Lord, the victory we have over uh, of all the illnesses and, and diseases of the world that come around us every single day. We thank you, Lord, that you come to bring us victory. You come to bring us your Holy Spirit. You come to bring us hope and peace in a world that's in turmoil. Lord, we, uh, we lift up some special folks that need healing this morning. We, we pray for Faith Boyer, who has had a difficult night, and, and we pray for rest and healing and recovery in Jesus' name. We lift up our sister Peggy, Eddie, who continues, Lord, to be fighting cancer and and we ask for healing and restoration and strength in jesus name to come upon her we pray for all those that in our families and our circles of influence lord that need your healing touch and we lift them up to you for your healing for their body their soul their mind and their spirit to know god that your power is real your presence is real and that you are with us and for us this day pour out your holy spirit lord as we worship you Empower us, God, with your spirit to see your truth, to, uh, to embrace the wisdom that you bring to us by your Holy Spirit, and to, to, Lord, to live it out, to live out what you share with us today. And, Lord, may our worship be to you in spirit and in truth. May we be true worshipers this day that glorify you in all that we do. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen. And let's continue to sing together. kids this morning. I can't even call Becca a kid anymore because she's graduating from college. So, I know, she takes care of our kids now. So all of you kids online, I hope you're listening. So all of you kids out here are going to have to listen to me today. Is that good for you? Well, this morning, I want to read a very short scripture. And I think you can memorize this scripture. It's from Ephesians chapter 4, and it's verse 32. You know what that one is? Uh, not off the top of my head. Cool. <laughs> Be kind to one another. That's it. 
be kind to one another. Can you imagine our world if each and every one of us just did that? Be kind. Be kind to one another. Well, I brought a couple things with me this morning. Does anybody know what this is? Cotton ball. That's right. You never know when you're going to need a cotton ball. And I brought another thing. Try not to drop it on George. What's this? <laughs> it's a rock. All right. Which one is soft? Cotton ball, right. It's not rocket scientist. Which one's hard? Yeah. All right. Which one would hurt you if I threw this at you? The rock. Do you know that the words and the actions that we speak and do can be either soft or hard? You know, soft words can be like, Please, thank you, excuse me, I love you. Hard words are usually bad words. When we're mad, sometimes we use hard words. Like, I hate you. You know, children, when you say that to parents, or spouses say that to one another when they get mad. It hurts. It hurts like you threw a rock in someone's head. So it's best not to speak when we're mad. We keep it inside because our words can really hurt. So repeat the scripture with me. Be kind to one another. Again, be kind to one another. It's not hard. So if every morning you practice saying that when you get up, you'll remember to be kind. Use your soft words, use your soft actions, give hugs, give love, and most of all, give thanks. And if you ever think about a rock, this rock I found, Diana, I keep it on my porch. It says, be kind. I want to thank my husband for that because when I told him what my sermon was, he said, the rock on the porch will help you. See, there you go. So it's everywhere we look. Be kind. So if you'll pray with me. Dear Jesus, help us to be as soft as a cotton ball. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Kind to one another. Amen. And thank you, Bob, for not throwing the rock. Yeah. 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 <laughs> all right. So uh, this is a good example. Um, did you all enjoy being part of children's time? If you did today, then you are just the kind of people we want to come and be part of our Young at Heart tomorrow. Uh, 1130 right here in the Fellowship Hall. Monday, uh, May 16th, that's the third Monday. We're going to try to start those uh, on the third Mondays. Young at Heart, we're going to have a meal together. This meal is completely covered. You don't have to bring extra food. And we're going to hang out. I don't even know what's on the agenda. But it will be fun because we will be young at heart. Uh, we will be kids together. So um, uh, please keep that on your list. Um, let's see. There were... Um, the other thing I need to mention, today is May 15th. Uh, it is also the, um, the last day that the Celebration of Mission event stuff was supposed to count towards the uh, dress up in a silly thing and a pie in the face. So, however, our uh, uh, district superintendent, Amy Shanholzer, will be with us on May 29th. And uh, so I've been assured that all the monies that we raise between now and then will also go for the mission projects of the annual conference. So if you'd like to continue to give to that, that's fine. Uh, if we get $500, it'll be Amy and I both in silly outfits. Uh, if we get $1,000, one of us gets a pie in the face. And, uh, I'm, uh, and, uh, you know, and it's okay if you want to like just put away a few dollars a week. You could give that over the summer. 
we'd still get there, it just doesn't have to happen before May 29th. That'd be fine with me. It's okay. <laughs> but, um, but that's going to be a lot of fun uh, and, and a good thing. Um, uh, so now's our time to celebrate the ways that we can give. And we do have folks online uh, right now. So you can send your offering to the church. Our mailing address, 301 Fairmont Avenue, is always an easy way to do that. You can also go to our website, cumcwb.org, click on the Give tab, and it'll take you to our uh, giving platform. Or if you're looking at YouTube or Facebook, there's an About button. And under that About button is a link to our Giving tab as well. Um, if you were previously using our mobile app, it has changed to Banco Mobile app. And so uh, the Banco Mobile app is the one that you use to find us online. That'll take you to our giving platform. You download it, you find the church, and, uh, and it's pretty easy. So um, let us uh, celebrate and let us have our ushers. They'll, uh, and they'll help us to give to God his tithes and our offerings at this time. God, we give you thanks for all the wonderful gifts that you give us and the gift of this day, the gift of one another. And Lord, we pray, God, that we will use your gift for your glory. Receive this gift, Lord, that it might build up the kingdom of God uh, in our church, in our community, in our state, in our world, but most of all, God, in our very hearts. So we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. You may be seated. All right, so I know um, several of you came to Melba's memorial service yesterday, and I so wish I had known her better. I came late to the game as far as she was concerned, but um, she's just a, such a good example of what a strong Christian woman is, and I'm just so thankful I got to be a part of that. So I have a kind of funny Melba story. So um, whenever she was here, I'd go back and talk to her, and you know, she was very kind, and I did notice how well she dressed. And I was always complimenting her, and I'm like, Melva, you need to give me your clothes. And I didn't want to say when you pass, but you know, when you're done with them, and I was going to tell John, I'm pretty sure I'm in the will. You need to go back and check that because I need some clothes and jewelry for Melva. Um, but when I first came here, I had a lot of blonde highlights, which of course she liked because her hair was very blonde. 
And then when I went dark, she was like, Sonny, I like your hair now, but I really like it a lot better blonde. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, well, Melvin, this is closer to my natural color and a whole lot easier to take care of. But she, she let me know that her preference was blonde. <laughs> and I love her for that. Oh, we're going to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high. Amen. And then we're going to sing um, the different version. I believe it's from Bethel. Um, of it as well. So if you want to stand, you can. If not, that's fine. But sing along, clap along. Lord, I lift your name on high.
right, I got to testify. Sometimes I start singing that song, even if it's not well with my soul, but I can sing into it. And by the end of it, it is well with my soul. And I'll, I thank you, worship team. I felt the spirit flow through this place as we were singing, and it was awesome. And I don't think it was just that the air conditioner kicked on. I'm really sure the spirit was here, and I hope it is well with your soul. It is good to worship, and I am so thankful for this worship team and the way they lead us into the presence of God. We are going to be in Acts chapter 11 uh, this morning, uh, and Acts is always an act of the Holy Spirit. We're going to see the Holy Spirit show up and do some cool things. Some time ago, uh, my wife Stephanie decided to uh, try these meals in a box plans. You ever tried the meal in a box? They send you your whole meal in a box and the recipe, and then you have to put it together and you eat something wonderful, right? So uh, um, my wife is really good. I call her Steph Chef. Uh, when she makes these meals, it, they're wonderful. They taste delicious and they're great. There have been a few times when I've said, oh, I'll just fix the meal, it's in the box, and it takes me two to three times as long as the little card says it'll take, and it doesn't turn out nearly as well as when Steph Chef uh, takes care of all that. She does let me do sous chef, so I get to wash dishes, and I'm happy for that, and I get to eat the meal. It's like a culinary adventure, right? So we get uh, bibimbap, I didn't know what that was, now I love it. Uh, we get these Korean bowls, Mediterranean spices on all kinds of flavors and food, spicy chicken. Uh, this past week, the chicken quesadillas were my favorite. So we get all these cool foods and, and lots of fun and, and we enjoy it. But uh, Stephanie, to accommodate a healthier eating style, has begun to modify the way this comes to us so that it's healthier. So instead of the beef bibimbap, it's bibimbap with an egg on top. Still pretty good. I like it, but it's not beef. Um, instead of rice, she'll substitute cauliflower rice, which, you know, it's pretty good. So the food's still delicious, it's healthy. But one night she's making stuffed peppers, and I love these stuffed peppers. I mean, they're really good. And so I, and so I was worried. I said, oh, what about the rice? And I thought, you know, if she has to leave the rice out and just put all beef, I'm going to be totally okay with that. And she said, oh, don't worry about the rice. I substituted cauliflower rice for that. Okay, well, what about the beef? She said, oh, we're just leaving the beef out. That, that'll be, you know, that won't be as healthy. No, no beef, no beef. Now, just vegetables. No beef, just vegetables. Now, I've enjoyed these meals, right? They're flavorful. They're good. I'm sure they would be flavorful, but I was pretty sure I needed protein. And, uh, and I think the full vegetarian step was just a bridge too far. And I said, hun, we, I need protein. Can you give me some protein? And so she had an idea. It was a crazy idea, but it was a wonderful idea. She said, what if I fry up some bacon and put on top of that? I'm like, oh yeah. Because bacon and me get along really well. Uh, you can add bacon to just about anything and it makes it better, you know. Um, you can put bacon on chicken. That's good. Uh, bacon on waffles, right? Bacon on a biscuit. I've even had bacon on a donut. And, uh, and there's all kinds of ways to just eat bacon with other foods. I mean, it, it's good. Even you can put bacon on vegetarian stuffed peppers and it's delicious. I, I, highly, uh, uh, I highly recommend it. So the reason I tell you the bacon story is because Acts chapter 11 was a moment in Christian history when bacon was almost off the menu. Um, it, this is a moment in the history of Christianity where Christian, uh, the Christian movement could have remained very Jewish and very kosher up until this moment, which would have meant no bacon and no shrimp and no lobster and uh, all kinds of things. But that's, but also it's also the, uh, uh, it's the, the law versus 
grace question as well. So here, listen to this story from Acts chapter 11. Now the apostles and the believers throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of the uncircumcised men and ate with them. Next slide. Starting from the beginning, Peter told them the whole story. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheet being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, and birds. Then I heard a voice telling me, Get up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, Surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going with them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear to his house and say, Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered that the Lord had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift he gave us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could stand in God's way? When they heard this, they had no further objections and praised God, saying, So then, even to Gentiles, God has granted repentance that leads to life. May God bless the reading of his word this morning. You know, it, it's interesting that in Acts uh, chapter 11, it isn't about... All the visions and the visit of the angel and the sheet that came down and the, and the interpretation of the vision or the preaching of the gospel, even the coming of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of these people up in Caesarea who had just received the Holy Spirit. Uh, this whole Acts 11 is about the reaction of the church in Jerusalem. You know, we would say that revival just broke out in Caesarea, Right? You know, God was showing up and doing amazing things and people were getting baptized. Hallelujah. But that's not what the people ask Peter about when they see him. According to Luke's account, why did you go to uncircumcised men and eat with them? It was a, a, a hard word, an accusatory word. It, I don't know if it had a rock in it, but it was maybe a thorn. It was an accusatory question for certain. It's odd that they would respond that way, isn't it? You know, but up until this time, belief in Jesus and worshiping Jesus was primarily a Jewish thing. And so if you're going to follow Jesus, you needed to uh, become a, a God-fearer. You would, uh, would then begin the proselyte process to, be, to convert to Judaism and believe in Jesus. It was Jesus and Judaism together. And so that meant you would uh, need to obey all the dietary laws, like I was talking about, no bacon. You would need to obey all the temple purity laws, like if you touched anything that was unclean, like a Gentile, or unclean like an animal that wasn't proper, or that something that was dead. Uh, all these ways that you could become unclean, you had to obey all those laws, and it had to do with who you ate with and who you associated with, which was why their question was so terse and so pointed. You ate with uncircumcised men, and you stayed at their house. You broke our purity laws. You broke the Jewish law. Um, so it wasn't about the this... Uh, this incident occurred, it was about that Peter was challenging the way they had practiced their religion for thousands of years. Not just hundreds, thousands. 
pretty big challenge. You know, they're, and they're not just coming against the, the traveling evangelist who came, comes in to tell the good news. This is Peter. Peter is the head honcho of the church. He's the leader of the apostles, the de facto leader uh, of the church in Jerusalem and the Christian movement at that time. And so they challenged him greatly about this. And this revelation, this change, uh, was so troubling to the, to the believers there that they would attack Peter, the very leader of the church. Have you ever been in the middle of, of one of these church disputes where someone does something that challenges the status quo, the long-held beliefs and practices of the church? So I'm not going to talk about one of those big, hard ones. I'm going to talk about one that is uh, pretty mild. It was, a, it was a warm Sunday evening, and, and on this particular evening, I was uh, trying to get back to the evening service at a particular church. And um, I inadvertently wore shorts to that service, um, which had broken the long-held traditions of this church, even on Sunday evenings. And so I was uh, addressed immediately about the fact that I was wearing shorts and, and so I never did that again. But, but I want to tell you what went on inside of me, you know, because I, I wanted to defend myself. I mean, I wanted to explain. I mean, it was a hot day. I, I went to a picnic with my family. The only way I could get back to church tonight was to come straight here. I didn't have time to go home and change my clothes and, and put on long pants. And, and should I just, do you think I should have just skipped church uh, because of that? Maybe I'll just skip church next time. And, See, in this tradition, they frowned on that too. So I was just mad about everything, you know. That was what was going on inside of me. I want you to notice that Peter, when he uh, is confronted by these people, he doesn't go there. He doesn't defend himself or, or go into an explanation about, you know, Jesus broke these boundaries all the time. He's the one who taught us how to do this stuff, to go and uh, reach people where they are and, and, and all that stuff. Why, in fact, Jesus did a lot worse than that. He would hang out with sinners and tax collectors and Peter the fisherman. Fishermen, all kinds of bad people. Jesus was like that. But Peter didn't try to convince them by his relationship with Jesus. Didn't try to convince them with uh, his theological explanation. Peter simply gave witness to what he'd experienced. You know, this was his defense. Um, he was going to simply give witness to what he'd experienced, which is a wonderful way for us uh, to, to share about what God has done in our life, just to give witness. And so that's how Peter approaches this situation. But it's interesting because you get to the end of his explanation, and he, and he basically says, hey, this wasn't me. This was God showing up, folks. Uh, this... He's, he, by telling them that story, he says, My trip to Caesarea was not a well-planned-out strategy to evangelize in Caesarea. It was a God-ordained appointment that God made between the Holy Spirit visiting him on that roof and the angel appearing to the family in Caesarea. God is the one who put that appointment together. Uh, Peter says, This was all God. This was the revelation of God. And, and God is the one who did this. Hallelujah. And you know, his, um, his witness, at that point, the scripture says it silenced them. They, they, they quit their discussion. They, it says they praised God. They declared that God has given this gift of repentance even to the Gentiles, and they praised God. And, and certainly some of their minds were changed in that moment. But I can tell you that not all of their minds were changed forever. <laughs> because all you have to do is continue to read the book of Acts and continue to read the, uh, the books that Paul wrote and the books of the other writers of the uh, New Testament. And you see again and again and again how those who disagreed with this came against the early church. They, they thought that people who became Christians should first have to become Jewish. They should follow the 
uh, Jewish traditions uh, and, uh, and, and follow the dietary laws and follow the, the uh, laws of the Torah and the purity laws. And so this was something that, that changed everything, but it took a while for it to take place. What has changed is what I want us to dig into because uh, uh, it's not about who they eat with or who they stay with. It's not about bacon, right? What's changed is the people. It's about the people. It's about that the people matter, right? That the people matter. According to the, prior to this encounter, those who didn't follow the Jewish law were unclean. They were profane. They were not to be dealt with. But uh, when this happens, Peter declares that they are, that he can go with them. He didn't hesitate because the Spirit said he could go with them. They, God said they were uh, clean. They were not profane. They were people. <laughs> Which people? Well, all the non-Jewish people is what he's talking about. And and he could be with them because these people mattered to God. And, and, and so the things that you could uh, now do with people were things like eat with them and stay in their home and, and, and uh, treat them as if they mattered and they existed. Life stuff. Hallelujah. And so this word comes to Peter and, and his interpretation of the vision is larger than some of those who just thought that, that the Gentiles should become Jewish first. Because he, here's what he says. He says, but God has shown me that I should not call anyone profane or unclean. And then later he says, I truly understand that God shows no partiality. No partiality. All encompassing statements. And this is before the Spirit comes upon them. You know, he says all. He says all. And I want you to think about that for a moment. <laughs> and is it any wonder that these, uh, uh, uns these, this group came and challenged Peter about what he had done? He said all. <laughs> that means all of those people that they have been uh, despising and rejecting all of their life and their parents and their parents and their parents for generations and generations and generations. And Peter says they're included. And it, so they're like, wait a minute, do you mean those people of a different nationality, of a different ethnicity, those people who wear their hair that way, those people who speak like that, those people who would dare to wear shorts in church, hallelujah, um, the ones who live differently, the ones who think differently. Peter says, I truly have seen that God shows no partiality. And, and this is a radical idea of hospitality that he brings to them. And we are witnesses to the Christ who would include all, even bacon eaters. Hallelujah. A God who would include all. It's the love of God shed abroad in our hearts that tells us what Peter experienced that day. So here's the other side of that coin. So what about the people who don't allow you to wear shorts in church? Does, is God's love for them? I mean, what, what about the people who would exclude you? Does God include those as well? Is God's love for them as well? You know, in the church we encounter uh, people who, who might think differently about things. Uh, Maybe they don't agree with the use of guitars and drums in worship. And, that, and that's okay. May, maybe they don't agree with the version of the Bible that you use. You know? Or, or the way that you baptize people. Or, or even where you eat in church. Right? Peter's point is pretty radical. That we are called to love other people, whether we agree with them or not, uh, about vegetables or bacon, about the tempo of the worship music or political leanings, about your interpretation of scripture about the second coming of Jesus Christ, 
That's a big one, right? Or even your worship dress code. And I praise God for Melva, who had a wonderful worship dress code. I... But see, I, I'm glad we get to eat bacon, right? But I'm even more glad that we get to witness to the power of the Spirit of God at work in this world. That is for all people. This past week I was at a, a workshop and I'm, I'm learning about having an outward mindset versus an inward mindset. And it was a reminder to me, it reminded me of this person who was driving me nuts. Because it seemed like, it seemed like every time I spoke, they felt the need to belittle me. Uh, it seemed like they didn't respect my opinions I anywhere. And, and, like, and it seemed like they didn't respect other opinions very much either. And, and so it reminded me of this because in this workshop they had the audacity to bring up the great commandment, right? You know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. And they challenged us if that person whom you disagree with was your neighbor. Did you love them as yourself? And here was the question that got me. Or did you treat them the very way they seemed like they were treating you? Ouch. And I, I had to be honest about that. That I was treating them not as a child of God or a person of worth, but, but as someone in my mind I was belittling. Someone that I didn't think very highly of their opinion of me. And, and that sounded more like the voices in my head. That I was too busy judging my neighbor to love my neighbor. And brothers and sisters, in this world that we live in, Jesus' love is the only hope we have to heal and mend the rifts of our world. And I think that's what God is calling us to in this scripture. You know, are there people who you need to love with God's love that you have received? Uh, can you hear God calling you to this unconditional love for them. I mean, maybe, maybe it's the folks who are struggling with addiction. Or maybe it's the folks in the church down the street. Or, or maybe it's someone in your household or, or someone on social media. Because the hope of the world is the power of God's love poured out on us. And the question is, are you ready to receive it? Are you ready to give it? Because that's the only way we can give it, is we have to receive it. And so that's what I want us to pray about this morning. Can we receive that love in our life? Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we thank you, Lord, for your love that has met us here this morning. And we, we're struggling, Lord, to love the unlovable. Uh, to love the ones who have hurt us and the ones who have hurt other people. And so, Lord... Give us that strength. We pray for grace and forgiveness. And we need the power of your spirit in us to do that very thing. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us, Lord. Fill our hearts with your love and, and, and help us, Lord, to, to uh, take away that unforgiveness in our hearts so that we can love you and love others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And brothers and sisters, I want you to continue in that uh, attitude of prayer because that's one of those that we have to stay, that we need Jesus to keep us near the cross. And so let's, let's pray and sing this song. You're welcome during this time to come to the altar and pray. Uh, stay at your seat. You can stand, sit, however you want to respond to the Lord this morning. Let's, let's worship together.
I liked Debbie's uh, benediction, her message to be kind to one another. Be kind to one another. That's a wonderful thing to take out of here by the Spirit of God. May that kindness infuse you from God's love in your heart and go forth from here to everyone you encounter today that you might glorify God. Go in His peace. Amen.